Guys, welcome to the Elk Shape YouTube channel, Seven Bear Tags. We got Craig from Ohio. We got William from Quebec. Yes, he's French Canadian. <laughs> Justin from Ohio. Dan from Red Deer, Alberta. Behind the lens, my good friend, Tyler Denham, Captain Firefighter, my dad, Hot Rod, and myself. We are gonna crush some bears this week. We'll bring you along. There's two drives everybody needs to do, in my opinion. Yes. The first one is fly to Anchorage, drive, rent a car, and drive to Homer. Then hop on a boat, go around the peninsula, and hunt black bears. But do that drive in late spring, unbelievable. It rivals what we did. And then the other one is drive through BAM for Jasper. There's nobody there compared to Yellowstone. I pulled over and videoed an amazing grizzly bear on a kill in uh, Banff. If that had been Yellowstone, we would have had nowhere to park. You couldn't drive by <laughs> and there'd be some jackass out there trying to get a selfie up close with a bear. Yep. <laughs> so Banff is greater than yep. Yellowstone and it has the same animals. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Any disagreement there? That was a bold no. statement. No. Yeah. What's up everybody? We are headed to Canada to go hunt bears with some of our subs. Looking forward to meeting those guys. Really looking forward to hunting with my dad. We are kind of the, we hunted with an outfitter once and that's what got us started in bear hunting. That experience wasn't the best experience ever. So it kind of catapulted us to want to hunt bears on our own. We learned all the baiting techniques so we baited for years and then I got into spot and stock and he started picking up a rifle and it man it's a lot of fun why do we bear hunt bears are predators bears don't have predators so we are conservation dollars go towards managing the bears if there's a value there there will be more bears so don't worry and bears eat fawns and calves it's good to keep them in check and bears live a long time so there's a lot of them on the landscape they usually reproduce every year or every other year with twins usually so hunting bears to me is a no-brainer and also it's nice to have all your broadheads dialed in right before you know the summer when most people wait for maybe August and uh, I'm excited to, we're gonna go pick up Tyler Denham uh, at his house right now and then we're gonna head to Canada hope we can get across the border because we have had our fair share of adventures trying to get across the border it's Tyler we're here Mitch bear Great. camp uh, let's go meet the four subscribers that are rolling with us this week and see who they are. Made it to the uh, Outfitter on Saturday night and got to meet all the subs. Wow. Let's just break those guys down. We had the French Canadian William, <laughs> who is arguably the most entertaining human of them all just because of his accent alone. What a great guy. Yep. Awesome. Phase four. Still 29? Yep. How's she shooting? Pretty good. Look at this special little lip in here. Yeah, that's the uh, 2.0. Is that a crispy? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I had never seen one. Yeah. All dialed? All dialed. Where's, where's your arrows? In my pocket. What, what are you using? Uh, Axe 6, uh, 5 millimeter match grade. Uh, I'll probably shoot the uh, Fatal Seal from Grim Reaper. Uh, tag veins, tag driver to uh, 2.75 uh, with the maximum helical to the left. <laughs> Never killed a bear? Never killed a bear. Have you ever seen one? Yeah, plenty. Okay. Yeah. Game on. Are you picky? No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then we had Craig, I would say arguably the most knowledgeable, biggest geek when it comes to archery, shot his bow twice as much as everybody. Yes. And Craig is like legit guy that wants to make himself better. He even left camp one night, drove to Edmonton to watch Jordan Peterson live. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. What up? This is Craig? Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? Ohio? Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on the dark side as well. I have no preference to boats. I'm an archery gearhead. Uh, this is actually the third boat that I've had in like less than a month. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh shit. I just I just sighted this in last week. You need a channel um, and tinker. And then I got the MFJJ Fletch here. MFJJ. Three degree right helical four Fletch. I know he loves that. Yeah. Yeah, one. baby. Um, actually stock stainless steel inserts. Rampage. Good enough. Yep. Hundred grain head, annihilator broadheads. Plain and simple, man. Gets Have the you job ever done. Killed bears before? Never killed a black bear, never seen a black bear. Oh sweet. So this is uh First, man, and I'm not picky. I will kill the first bear that walks across, man. You're smart, you're smart. So, yeah. And then we had his best buddy, Justin, who's a family man, yeah. great archer, sacrificed a ton to be on this hunt. I could feel the strain, not only like from us, I would say from like a wife letting you go, the financials. It was a big commitment for him. Uh, NTN 33 with a special. Yeah, you can't buy that. That's so nice. One off camera. How'd you do that? Uh, laundry bag and some spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it works. It works with rifles. It... Go over your arrow setup too. Yeah, what are you gonna shoot a bear with? Uh, Black Eagle, X Impact, AE hybrids, three fletch, pretty simple. Max what, Eagle. What uh, broadhead? Uh, Fatal Steel? Yep. Fatal Steel, Grim Is that a three Fatal blade? Steel. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, grains? Uh, 100. Okay, so ever killed a bear? No. Ever seen a bear? Uh, running down the road, like 150 yards. Yeah. But never hunted them? Well, we've gone hunting. Never saw them while hunting. <laughs> One day. Gonna, yeah. You guys are going to see One bears. And you're day. from Ohio as well? Correct, yeah. Foremost, Dan, the man, firefighter out of Red Deer, paramedic. You and him hit it off, Tyler, because mm -hmm. you guys are both paramedics. Yep. And he was a great guy, and he's actually one of two individuals to kill a bear the entire week so we'll talk about that did brian talk to you about where to hit him yep what'd he tell you middle of the middle <laughs> oh, gosh, eh? and that, are you do you guys buy that yep. i mean it's gonna freak you out when you're like whitetail hunter from ohio there's the crease there's a the vital v and you're like what and then you're gonna move over i'm, I'm pumped for all yeah you. i yeah, like for sure I, no one's I, killed a barrier that's what i am full about. sir thank you tyler is a bear killer machine thank you guys have met tyler and then Rod, he's killed a few, hundred. Yeah, so it's kind of cool at camp, they have a blind set up so that you can practice shooting out of a blind. These guys, you can't leave ground blinds out when you bear hunt, the bears will destroy them. So you actually set the blinds up when you get there based on the wind, which is really cool because bears will circle, get your wind. And it's also really, really important to practice shooting out of a blind, making sure you get rod head clearance, making sure that you don't lose posture, slouch and hit low. So we're gonna get my old man. I haven't seen my dad shoot a bow in two years. So let's get him dialed and make sure he's good to go. No probs shooting out of the blind? No. Medieval Broadhead. Twin Valley Outfitters. Twin Brian, Valley. thank you for having us. Me and my dad don't hunt together as much as we used to. It's mainly my fault, but we're hunting together this week. That's right. We got the best memories, elk hunting and bear hunting together forever. Yep. We're hunting baits, guys, but we don't have to do the work. Baiting is so much more work than spot and stock, and I respect both ways, but hopefully we got some good bears to shoot. I just saw him shoot a couple nice arrows with his broadhead. What are you using for a broadhead? Muzzies. Muzzies, trocars or something? Yep. And the, th the key here, guys, when you hunt a Canada, so if you ever, if you've never worked one before, it's these fuel canister type things. So you got a fuel canister. It's weird. It doesn't require like matches or, but that, this is your guy right here. So you're going to take sure. this. And the mosquitoes are bad, like level 10. Yep. And we haven't seen the worst. You just stick it in there and screw this in. Okay. Is this carcinogenic? Hopefully. And then we're just going to slide this in here. See those bastards? Okay. And then... You know, turn it on for like probably 10 seconds. Yeah. You hear that fuel? It's lit? Yep. And it's going to just... Or do I hang it with this? You would hang it in the blind with this. And so it's running. Hopefully stack up some bears this week. Should be awesome. And they had five shooters showing up at this one. And I'm like on the ground, no blind, 16 yards from the barrel, just ready to smoke a giant. You know what I mean? And I sat there from 1 p.m., till 10 10 p.m and i saw a squirrel what did you see tyler that first night that's not all i saw what did squirrel you see a really fat squirrel so then we Here's go back it. to camp and i'm like surely there's seven of us somebody had to see a bear 
And Craig did see a bear. Yeah. He's never seen a bear in his life. No. And he shoots the first bear to come into the bait. Because he's smart. He's got bear meat and we don't. And yep. um, he just shot a bear and I don't think he regretted it. And so if he's happy, I'm happy. So Craig shoots a bear. No one else sees anything. No. My red flag kind of starts rising, like going up a little. I'm like, well, I'm glad that Josh Jones didn't get his passport in time because he would have been having his yeah. eyes opened to how many really smart bow hunters there are out there that yeah. really know their equipment. They knew all this terminology I'd never even heard. These guys were was, students of the game. Oh, my goodness. I was so I was impressed. learning from them, which yeah. is great. The other thing we filmed was um, well, Craig What were those a... broadheads that, that he was sharpening? He sharpened my iron wheels, and he's using the same single bevel iron wheel. Yeah. So it's called the Stay Sharp system. So it's basically made for the single bevel. So it's like two to two, uh, 32 degrees. You got three different plates. This one's a 2000s because I just shot it through uh, like a foam. So it's not that uh, it's not that important to remove as much material. So you just run it uh, front and back. As soon as you got a burr on the other side, you just like flip it and you remove the burr. And then you polish it. Simple as that. And the magic trick is once that is done, like a serial cardboard with like the the wax thing. You put like your buffing compound on. And that's what makes it like crazy sharp. So it's just like a letter for polishing it. And that is just one side. And you can do that for like an hour if you want to. Are you drinking a beer right now? Yeah. My dude. It's not even 12 o'clock. You're, you're on the that, program. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Craig also brought a fletching device from Goat that I'd never seen before for four fletches. I'm ordering it. I was... So here we are. This is the Goat Tough fletching jig. Um, I would say it's probably on par with maybe some of the easiest fletching jigs around. There's, uh, this is pretty much how you use it. This would be your index, right, if you want to do a four fletch. And that's for three, 120 degree, 90 degree. Um, so there's finished product. These are removable here. I guess this is like the clamp you would call it. They have them in several different sizes. Uh, this one is a two degree helical. I'm not really sure how they come, but, so there's a little hole here, and you just put the index in there like that, and you press down, whatever, seven seconds or so. So let's give it a try. Fan just slides in there all the way back. Nice bead of glue, just like any other fletching jig. You know, less is more. Press down, piece of cake. Just like that, piece of cake. And since you can put a lot of pressure when you're pushing down, you get really good adhesion on the base, which is another reason why I really like it. I mean, it is, it's tight on there. So it's probably like 45 bucks. Yeah. It's competitive. Yeah. Especially for what it is. You know, it's, it's portable. It's, I think there's options for left and right. So, you know, look them up. Goat Tough, it's certainly worth a, a look. Uh, I think it's a very friendly jig, you know, if, if you're just getting into fletching. Um, it's definitely up there with some of the easiest jigs that you can use. So there's a close-up of that. I actually tied serving. I don't know if you can see that, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, so I tied serving because some knocks are thinner or thicker than others, and that makes sure that it doesn't wiggle around in there too much. Obviously, you could tell it would have gone a lot farther. Um, but just kind of helps it keeping from uh, any inconsistencies in the fletching. So finished product. Yeah, I guess we're gonna do a testimony. How yeah. easy is this fletching jig to use if you've if, never used it before? If a French Canadian can do it, <laughs> no, everybody <laughs> then, can do it. Then anybody All can right. do it. Yeah. Straight down. Yep. Stupid crazy. <laughs> Even a French Canadian can do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, I took a picture, I'm buying one as soon as I get back. Isn't that wild? French Canadian, you had a bear popping his teeth at you last night. How'd that make you feel? Uh, I almost shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was at Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll, yeah. Jelly Roll. Pretty fatty bear. <laughs> yeah. 
first time that it ever happens to me. I had the wind down in my back and now... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the bear hunting wasn't great, but man, the camaraderie in camp and that was the most memorable for me. But Do you think Josh would approve, Josh Jones, of your four vein? <sighs> Probably not, <laughs> but I think it's cool. So we can go to hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> This is, uh, I guess, an explanation on the utility and the function of these hourglass shapes. This is called the In Time System by Dan McCarthy. These come in four different sizes. This is how they'll be shipped. So that's an indication of their sizes. So what these do is they occupy space in your cables to achieve perfect timing because if you have a Matthews and you're OCD like me, and you put your bow in a drawboard and you get to the point where you're rocking back and forth between the top or the bottom cam hitting and you add a half a twist and it switches which cam is hitting first and and you were wondering if there might be a better way to get your times your cams perfectly synchronized well this is the answer to that they come in four different sizes i always put the small ones in which is why they're not on display here and so this is a small one and this is a small one Especially if you're at like hunt camp, you put the small ones in. If your timing seems off while you're shooting broadheads, because um, obviously you're probably not gonna have a draw board at bear camp. So if your broadheads are hitting high or low, you can, you can pop these out to adjust to timing so that everything hits at the appropriate time. You have that adjustability on the fly and that uh, precise tuning as well. So it's not just a Matthews thing, you could use it on any bow, but it's certainly worth considering for a set. This is two sets. Um, a silver set and an orange set and they come with four of each size small two mediums and a large if the cams are hitting basically in time let's say the top one is hitting just a touch fast you want to retard it so go ahead and try the smallest one on the cable for that cam slow it down a bit and then put it back in the drawboard and see what you're working with if you're still hitting a touch fast you can keep going up in sizes until they're perfectly in time. It definitely gives you more forgiveness with your broadhead to feel point impact. I'm just gonna fast forward to the second night. We all sit, we all come back, no one sees a bear. My red flag is all the way up. It gets up the flagpole. I'm like this, what is going on? Like, mm -hmm. and the outfitter is the nicest guy in the world and he is stressed the F out. You can tell, he is just like, yep. yeah. what What am I gonna do here? Like, I don't know why my baits aren't He's being on his hit. phone constantly. On his phone. Next thing you know, he comes up to me. He's like, all right, Dan, I talked to my buddy. He has a different allocation. I'm going to pay for you to hunt his allocation. I'm going to send my guide. You're going to go hunt. It's only an hour away. And we're rooting for them, and they're rooting for us. Mm -hmm. So my hour drive that day, this is day three, two and a half hours easily. And we meet up with the other guide, and he takes me into this bait, and it's such a dope setup. It's a wooden tree stand platform, so it's like enough room for a chair, my camera to be on a tripod, my backpack. I could lay down if I wanted to. Was it hand built or hand metal? built? Hand built. And sturdy. And not so high off the ground where you're freaked out. Um, and then the bait was just off the ledge to where the prevailing wind was from the bait to me. But even when the thermal switch, the bears can smell the bait, but they don't smell you. Right. It was just a perfect setup. And I had um, a sow come in, and she came in for 15 minutes. Her behavior was, I knew it was a sow because her wrists, this is weird, but her wrists were so skinny. Yeah. And her hips were so wide. And she would get in the, tip the barrel over, and she'd go put her head all the way in the barrel, and she could get her shoulders into the barrel. She wasn't broad. That's when I'm like, yeah, she's definitely a sow. But her behavior was like paranoid that another bear was going to do bad things to her like yep. she must have been in heat i could just tell like she had been messed with yep. and she was just constantly looking over shoulder so when i passed on her it was early it was like six o'clock p.m it doesn't get dark till 10 10 that's your last legal out light i'm like i got three hours of an of a sow in heat smell at this food source i'm gonna shoot a giant tonight and i did not i never you saw another know. bear and so the next day Day four comes, nobody's seen a bear except for Craig and now me. Craig shot one, I saw, I passed on a sow. And it's, we're four days in. So Dan, the subscriber who lives in Alberta, 
can go hunt with me two and a half hours north because it doesn't take one of the alien allocations. Basically, Mm -hmm. it doesn't cost anything. Right. So he elects to go with me. And I told him, hey, man, you should sit the bait. I was at yesterday. Like, there's a nice sow. She doesn't have cubs. You've never killed a bear. Maybe you shoot her. Maybe she brings in a giant. Like, get something killed. But then just out of the corner of my eye to the left, she comes silently sneaking in. And then she hits the beaver. Like, she'll sit under there for a couple seconds. Then she'll dive halfway into a barrel. And she'll get out. And then she'll go back to the beaver. And she'll walk behind the tree. And she decided, she acted like she was going to head out. So she starts walking away and then she changes her mind for one more snack. And during that time, she had stopped for maybe five seconds total. So I drew back. Okay, she's moving again, let down. Drew back, let off the safety. Right as it's like, I think it's about to break, she starts moving again. I'm like, oh, back on the safety. I'm using the silver back. So that's the one of the downsides of the silver back. Because you can't quite, sometimes you need it to go when it has to go. In yeah. that case, uh, wasn't going. Fucking but, Jedi control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then finally she was kind of walking out like she was going to leave. And she just stopped real quick and turned like broadside and kind of did a look back to at the bait. And the shot broke just right then. And then, unfortunately, she like happened to take a step when it broke and then it hit her pretty far back. But we got her. All right, today on Knock on Archery. We're gonna switch this guy here from the Silverback over to the Carter Wise Choice. Are you ready, my friend? Ready. Okay, we've got a wheels are coming off. We've got a really nice total archery challenge shot over here. Are you ready for this? Through the trees. You got target down range. Here's your new release. I'll trade you. Okay, thank you. Uh, knockonarchery.com. Alright, so pull through the shot. You ready? Okay, focus, pull through, pull through the shot. <laughs> Draw your bow, pull through. Okay, okay, aim for that back strap over there. Later on, we're gonna fire up the Traeger. We're gonna call Sharon, you ready? We're doing it, buddy, no tag suit tonight. Squeeze your butt cheeks, that's right. Okay. Executed, you followed through! Knock on, baby! The biggest thing to remember for me is don't put your thumb on the trigger with this thing versus the silverback. That's right, let it do it, man. Trust Otherwise, you're really going to lose some arrows. <laughs> Good break. That's nice. I like that. So why are you thinking about going to a thumb barrel after using shooting a live animal with a, a silverback? Live animals move a little more than uh, 3D targets. So sometimes you need to accelerate your shot process a little bit. And I found with this bear, she wouldn't stand still for more than two seconds. So three drawbacks and two thumbs off the safety before a shot actually broke. And then sometimes you just need to get it get it there a little sooner. So Yeah, day four, he finally like busted out his photos, his all his trail cameras, all his yeah. bait sites. That's 16 cameras. And I started to understand what we were up against. So the yes. wildfires that were still going on while we were there were not far from us. There was so much wildfire going on that towns nearby were being evacuated. Yes. But Alberta, you can, BC, you cannot shoot grizzly bears. They're not huntable. And so that's been going on for years now. So they have a surplus of grizzly bears. And these grizzly bears migrated south of the fires. And guess where we were? South of the fires. Every bait that Brian had out had a giant grizzly bear on it, eating the food, sleeping at the bait. And guess what black bears and grizzly bears don't mix basically consider a bait site a kill site a food source obviously the grizzly can't bury a barrel so they're just going to lay down next to it grizzlies are known for killing eating burying leftovers sleeping until the food source is gone they don't leave a food source whereas black bears will come in eat a little they don't bury it they'll go find somewhere to lay down downwind and they'll come back and forth which is why baiting for black bears is so awesome grizzlies don't leave sites for nothing So now we are starting to realize why we aren't seeing any bears and why our guides have a pump shotgun. Yeah, with buckshot. For black bears? No, for the grizzlies. And so, man, I feel for Brian, but I it's a combination of wildfires, grizzly bears inhabiting all his bait sites, and just bad luck. Sneak peek 2024 Evo NTN 33 custom archery baby. This is one off. You can't buy this right now, but it's going to be our 2024 seasons uh, Ovid in camo. So uh, write that down. 
Uh, anyway, we're going to take some shots, follow through, back straps every day, every day on the Traeger. Hook it on, goat release, changing it up. Execute. Once the, bear, the grizzlies came in, all the black bears left. He had no nothing on any of his sights. He didn't have any. We were sitting sights that weren't getting hit in multiple days. So he just didn't have any options for us. And there was no options for spot and stock. The bears didn't really hit the... Um, there's so much feed in these woods that the bears didn't have to come out to the roads to feed. There was no like spot and stock type options or like drive roads and see bears. So there wasn't, there just wasn't, he needs to have more options, I guess. They've all hunted a lot, but they're new to outfitting. And so um, learning all these little nuances for the outfitting side is, is where they're at. And they're learning, they'll learn from these mistakes and grow. And I think, I hope he does, he does better in the future. Uh, those guys go into those baits every day with those 12 gauge shotguns with double op buck and slugs in it. Uh, they know they got a problem and Tyler hit the nail on the head. You know, like you say all the time, bears hump and defend themselves with their noses. They don't see anything. You walk right up to them and shoot them sometimes. And they don't even know you're there. I've seen that five times on your videos. And I just think there is a lot of grizzly bears and the fire probably pushed them but i also think that if you don't have baits 10 miles 15 20 miles apart dude you're you're messed up when the grizzlies come in because i saw those trail camera photos and they i gotta be giants honest giants everywhere black bear uh, giants everywhere yeah i gotta be honest with the audience i would not have sat in my blind four nights in a row if i had known that one mile that direction was, was a 600 plus pound grizz. Bear. Yep. And I never hunt where we hunt bears without a sidearm. I don't. I refuse to do it. I don't leave the cabin without something on my hip. And I don't go tracking them late at night without that 44 mag on my hip because I don't want something to go wrong. When I actually saw his photos, I was truly shocked. That's something that big. Remember that one where they smashed that 55-gallon drum like a beer can? Mm -hmm. Just smashed it flat, and I was like... Black bear can't do that? No! No, no black bear I've ever seen. Well, so, I did get an email from Brian yesterday, and the bait that Tyler was hunting now has another grizz on it, and it by far exceeds any of the giant grizz that we already saw. It is twice the size of a 55-gallon drum, and it's sleeping on the bait site. That's a game changer. You know, when you're sitting there in your stupid little ground blind yeah. and you're dealing with a bear that has no fear of humans, the black bears run away if they see you, you know, if they smell you, they're not coming in. Right. The biggest excitement for me was to spend time with you guys together in a chill <laughs> hunt. That was the best part. And then meeting those subs. But I was dying inside because I can hunt. That was eight days I burned. Yeah. Those are eight days I could have hunted two hours from my house yep. and probably got a stock in a day. And that's what it takes to be successful spot and stalking bear hunting. And I live for that. I'm not really into hunting bears over baits. I definitely condone it. I think it's awesome. But there comes a point in time where like you compare baiting to putting a backpack on and boot leather and humping it and crossing canyons and creeks and the physicality of hunting a bear in the mountain spot stock. Yeah. Nothing <clears throat> compares to that. Thank you guys for listening to us jibber jabber on the 300th episode. Appreciate your continued support. Uh, can't do this without you guys. Hopefully you guys get a chance to get out there and do some bear hunting in the spring. Maybe not this year, but next year it's an adventure hunt. Watch the mountains, wake up, do some predator control work on you. I mean, I can't think of a bear hunting has always fast forwarded my archery game. I've always had to have broadheads fixed flying amazing by May. Whereas most guys, that's not a concern until August. That's really fast forwarded my setup. I learned all, I get to test and vet new gear upgrades. You get to watch the mountain come to life. You see more game because it is spring and they're moving up to the green. And it's just awesome to get out after a long winter. Hopefully you guys can do that and chase some adventure. Appreciate your support, separations in the preparation. We'll catch you on the next one.
Oh, beautiful. Oh, the balloon lifted. <laughs> I'll be by in the morning. <laughs>